This has been my theme song for yesterday and today because today is Thursday and it's going to be a busy, busy, busy day. I've got a lot of stuff going on, so I just feel like I've got to keep moving, got to keep moving because I know if I sit still, I will probably fall asleep. But I would just want to say happy Thursday to you guys. This is it. This is our last work day. I mean, we have come a very very long way. So hello to Savannah, Lilia, Andrew, Melani, and Renee. Happy Thursday, y'all. Caroline, Nyla, Kartikeya, Brianna, and Cole. Happy Thursday. Cassie, <laughs> Miles N, Miles P, Gearman, Avery. Happy Thursday. Arjun, Kai, Kaith, Rory Fika, happy Thursday. Anit, Juliana, and Lily, happy Thursday. So like I said, today is your last day of new assignments. And again, I've had a lot of people um, turn in their stuff early. You guys have turned your stuff in and you guys are clear. So the biggest thing you need to do, please and thank you, um, I'm going to be sending out uh, messages if I am missing any work from either Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or before, I'm going to be sending a message today because we really are hoping, fingers crossed, to try to get this stuff turned in by tomorrow. So um, the best way you can check and you're like, oh, I hope I've turned everything in. I hope Miss Anderson's not missing something. The easiest way for you to check because we have found, again, technology, <laughs> um, the numbers sometimes aren't always correct. So the best way for you to check is go click on the activity in the homeroom section. Make sure it doesn't show you anything there because if it's empty, then it should be nothing due. And same thing for if you're in my math class, check in the, home, in the um, activity section for there. And again, whew. If it is empty there, then you are good. And again, I will also send you guys a message as well when I've got all your assignments to say, hey, I've got them all. You're good to go. So I've been feverishly trying to check them. And you can also see, hey, has Miss Anderson checked my thing? Because remember, I'll either put a comment or I'll also put my little Bitmoji picture on there. And I think my favorite one, I don't know why, because it's kind of a goofy looking one, is the one where I'm a star. My face is a star. I like that. I think it was fun. So today, we've got that going on. We've got our conversation. This is actually going to be kind of a shorter video just because tomorrow, because it is our last video, I am probably going to make that video a little bit longer. But I've got a little snack, if you will. Um, <laughs> I... You know that we tape our lessons, teachers tape our lessons. Let me give you a little background. I know you guys probably think, wow, Miss Anderson's so good. She can film those lessons the first time and have no problems. Sure, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I, fi I find that the reading and language arts lessons, I do pretty quick. I can probably get them in two or three times like two or three tries, I can usually get it and I'm happy with it. The math, math take forever. And first grade teachers, we have found across the board, math are the longest videos for us to try to figure out to make sure we can explain it in such a short amount of time. So there was one night and boys and girls, um, it was when we were doing the three dimensional shapes and we were doing um, the vertices, edges, and faces, I snipped out all of my mistakes and made them into a little video. So I will show it to you. I will post it as well. And so it is it's bad. <laughs> so if you want a little bit of a giggle, um, that might be something up your alley, if that's something you might be interested in. So... It's, I, I'm not saying it's going to win a, an acting award, but I started looking at it and I sent it to the other uh, teachers on first grade and they all had a good giggle and they go, yep, yeah, that's just like we, that's just like what we do, except we just didn't snip it and put it together to make a video, Anderson, but that's, that's me. 
So my book for today, and actually this is the book I read to Natalie for bedtime, and it is a Anderson House favorite. And um, if you have not had a chance to do your reading lesson for today, it is all about learning lessons and what lesson can we learn from books. And this book, I think, teaches so many lessons. I think there's so many lessons you could get from this book. So that's part of the reason I picked it. And just, again, it's an Anderson favorite. So it is called Rockabye Crocodile. Two elderly boars lived in the jungle, and a boar is like a wild pig. They were neighbors. Amabel was cheerful and kind. Nettie was mean and selfish. Amabel, or one morning, Amabel trotted down to the river to fish. She was humming, hum, 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 as she passed a bamboo tree. It swayed to her tune and dropped two small fish into her basket. Why, thank you, she said. The bamboo replied with a shower of minnows. So when she told the tree, thank you, the tree ended up giving her more fish. Hmm. Amabel filled her basket, said thank you again, and went on. She still needed a really big fish to fill her belly. Suddenly, she stumbled over a crocodile. Oh dear, she cried. Good morning, grandmother, growled the crocodile. Why don't you watch where you're going? Excuse me, Amabel said. I didn't see you. I was looking for a fish for dinner. I'll catch one for you, said the crocodile, if you'll do something for me. Come into my cave. I have to feel like that is a pretty trusting creature because I don't know if crocodile's like, hey, hop on my back. <laughs> Let me go into, let's go into my cave and I'm going to, I'll help you out. I think, I don't think so. Mm -mm. A baby crocodile lay howling in a mud puddle in a corner of the dark, dirty cave. Isn't he sweet, said the crocodile, but he won't stop crying. Rock him to sleep and you won't be sorry. I'll be right back. And off she went. The baby was muddy and cold, but Amabel held him gently and rocked and hummed, rocked and hummed. Soon the baby stopped howling and went to sleep. So if you look real close at the front of the cave. Mm. The crocodile went to the deepest part of the river and caught some eels, crabs, and a very large fish. Then she wove a basket from the river reeds, filled it, and returned to the cave. Here, grandmother, she said, come back whenever you want more fish. Thank you, I will, said Amabel. He's such a nice baby. Then she hurried home. Did you catch all those fish? Nettie demanded. It all started with a bamboo tree, said Amabel. And then I met a crocodile and she told Nettie the whole story while they shared the fish. So she went back and she shared her fish with Nettie because she got all this extra stuff. So she went back and shared it. 
Early the next morning, Nettie rushed to the river with a huge basket. She shook the bamboo tree. Turn your leaves into fish for me, she ordered. Nothing happened. She butted the tree hard, and that means she ran into it with her nose and her horns. The bamboo snapped back and she went flying into a prickle bush. Ow! She screamed and ran along to the riverbank. Where's that crocodile and her crybaby? She snarled. The crocodile stuck her head out of the cave. Oh, there you are, Nettie grunted. Go fill this basket with eels, crabs, and big fish and hurry up. The crocodile was very angry. I wonder why the crocodile might be feeling that way, because we talked about feelings yesterday. I know if somebody was talking to me like that and saying, you better do this, and they didn't even say please. I know I'd be really annoyed by that. I think it'd be very rude. So the crocodile was very angry, but she said, rock my baby to sleep, and I'll do what you ask. Nettie grabbed the baby and bounced him up and down. What an ugly son. If I had one like you, I'd run, she crooned. The baby cried harder. So again, you see she's not being very kind, but notice what's over here. Mmm, the crocodile's watching. I wonder how the crocodile feels seeing that someone's talking to the baby that way. It wasn't long before the crocodile returned. She snatched back her baby and handed Nettie a basket. Don't uncover the basket before you lock your doors and windows or the fish will escape, she growled. So I wonder, because remember when, Net, um, when Amabel went home, remember what she did with her fish, didn't she share with Nettie? Do you think Nettie is going to share with Amabel? Let's see. Nettie grabbed the basket and was out the door and running home. This food is all for me, she decided. I won't share even a fish eye with Amabel. Because the story at the beginning did say she was selfish, so we're seeing an example. Nettie sneaked into her house and bolted the door. She sealed the windows and stuffed grass into the cracks and holes. Finally, she opened the basket. I wonder if Nettie's going to be excited by what she finds. Whoosh! Out came spiders and scorpions, rats and bats. Nettie huddled in a corner. Funny thing is the first time I read this to Natalie when it said whoosh, I did that and grabbed her knee, scared her half to death. It, it was funny. Next door, Amabel heard the noise. What a ruckus, she thought. I better see what's going on at Nettie's house. Amabel had to break the door down. The spiders, scorpions, rats, and bats rushed out the open door. Oh, Amabel, Nettie cried. I'm so glad to see you. I've been such a fool. That means she realized she's made a mistake. Poor Nettie, said Amabel. Come over to my house and have some tea and tell me all about it. From that day on, Nettie and Amabel took turns caring for the crocodile baby and the bamboo tree. And the crocodile supplied them with all the fish that they could eat. So obviously it looks like Nettie learned her lesson. So what lesson could I learn from this book? Well, one thing I know, um, and that Natalie and I talk about all the time when we read this book, is the importance of manners. Because notice when Amabel used her manners, she said, thank you and please, and was very respectful 
notice good things happen to her, right? But then when Nettie did it, Nettie was rude and demanding and wasn't very pleasant to be around. And notice what happened to her. Bad things. So manners and being respectful are important because if you're respectful, what happens back? People show respect to you. So remember, today is Thursday. I hope you guys have an amazing day. And if something amazing happens, I'd love to hear about it. There has been a lot of loose and lost teeth this week. I think there's like five of y'all that have lost teeth. So I think some of you might be getting ready to gum on some applesauce. You're losing so many teeth. But thinking of you guys, and I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Take care, y'all. Happy Thursday.